9.5 parametric equations. So you might remember um, from very, not very long ago, polar coordinates. This was a, another way for us to graph things, really. And we have another one here called parametric equations. And this definition up here is not going to make much sense here right away. So let's just actually jump right into an example to better understand what's going on here. So your x coordinate is going to be described by a function, which is just t squared here. Your y coordinate will also be described by some function, which is t minus 1. And you can think about t here as almost being like time, saying, you know, when, when t equals 1, what, what is the location? Okay, and so the location would be the x and the y coordinate. And so is what I've done is I've created a little table here on the left where we are going to plug in some various values of t into each one of our equations for x and for y. Let's start off with uh, maybe t equals minus 3. Okay. We're to do that, if you were to square that, okay, so minus 3 squared, that's going to give you a positive 9. So the x coordinate is 9. And then if we wanted to think about the y-coordinate, well, we'd have minus 3, minus 1, which is minus 4. So one of the points on our graph here is 9, comma, minus 4. Let's go ahead and put that on here. I think that that's about, about there. Good enough. Uh, next, let's try t equals minus 2. Next on our list. If you square that, you get 4. And if you were to plug in t equals minus 2 in to this function, we get minus 2 minus 1, so that's minus 3. So there's another point on our graph. Let's go ahead and plot this other point, 4 comma minus 3. That's right here. And let's just really quickly fill this table out, and then we'll plot a few more points. So when t equals minus 1, if you were to square that, it would give you 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. And then over here in the y column, it's just supposed to be t minus 1. So we just, we're just really taking away 1 from the t value. So minus 2, minus 1. 0, 1, 2. Okay. But let's keep plotting. We're on this point here. So 1, comma, minus 2. So 1, comma, minus 2. 0, comma, minus 1 would be the next one. So here's 0 and then minus 1. And then a 1, comma, 0. And then 4, comma, 1. And then lastly, 9, comma, 2. like about right there and let's go ahead and connect those dots and then think about what this is let's do better we go and so think about what that looks like for a second this looks like a parabola but sideways right okay. and there's a reason for that and we are going to find out what that reason is right now and to do that we're going to do something called eliminating the parameter which we're not always going to be able to do this but when we can um, it can help us figure out what the graph should look like so I'm going to actually write here somewhere, eliminating the parameter. Okay. 
So first of all, you might be wondering, well, what is the parameter? Well, the parameter is just t. Um, we don't always use t as the parameter. Sometimes we like to use s, or it really could be any other variable, but most commonly you'll see t. And in most applications, t is going to represent time. So, so really a lot of the time we're going to be describing motion when we're using parametric equations. So that being said, is what you want to do is look up at your two equations and you want to solve one of them for t. And I like to choose whatever one's easier to solve for t. So I'm going to take that y equals t minus 1 there. And I'm going to solve it for t. So t should be equal to y plus 1. And now you might be wondering, well, why is that helpful? Well, we can take this and substitute it into the other equation, this x equals t squared. We're going to do that. So we have x is equal to t squared. And we know that t is equal to y plus 1, so we have x is equal to y um, plus 1 squared. Let's think about this in maybe a way that we're, we're used to thinking about this. If we were looking at maybe say y is equal to x plus 1 squared, we would know that that is a parabola that is just shifted over one unit to the left. So we'd have something that looks like this. The only difference here is we have x equals, right? x equals y plus 1 squared. So we really have the same thing going on. It's just horizontally. And if, if you look, we'll see that we've actually even been shifted over one unit here with our picture of our parabola. Right here. Shifted over that one unit, in this case, actually down. Um, but if you don't actually like thinking about your equations in terms of x equals, you'd prefer if it was y equals, you could. Um, but this is really our, our answer here. You could leave it just like this. But let's see what the alternative would be. Um, so there's actually a good reason to prefer the y equals format, and that is you can easily plot it on your calculator if it's in that format. Well. Let's go ahead and, and we're going to start off with our y plus 1 squared equals x. This is just this equation over here. And if you were to uh, use what is called the square root property, we get y plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. And the next thing we can do is we could subtract by 1 on each side. So we get y is equal to, and we have plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. But we wouldn't want to leave it like this, okay? So this thing here can be represented by two separate functions if we solve for y, and it would be y equals the positive square root of x minus 1, and y equals minus the square root of x minus 1. Okay. And this would be the, the top half of the parabola, and this down here is the bottom half. And so we're going to do two things on our calculator. For one, we're going to actually verify that this does give us a parabola by plotting these two here. But then we'll see that we can actually also plot um, parametric equations. Okay, We don't actually have to write it in terms of x and y like this. All right, so let's go ahead and switch to the graphing calculator. Now that we're looking at our, our graphing calculator, you can see we have both of those equations typed in our calculator, y equals the square root of x minus 1 and minus the square root of x minus 1. Let's go and adjust our window here. So when we plotted this by hand, we just looked at this from, uh, what, x equals 0 to 9. So 0 to 9 and by ones 
And then in the y, we just went minus 4 to 2, minus 4 to 2, and also by 1s there. And so the last thing uh, that we need to do here is just hit graph. So here's the top half, as we, as we mentioned, the y equals the square root of x minus 1. And there's the bottom half of that parabola. Now, if I were to zoom out here a little bit, um, which I am going to do, I'm going to hit zoom and hit zoom out. You can see that this parabola keeps going. But we actually only wanted to plot this for t equals minus 3 to 3. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to adjust our graph here a little bit, the one that we did by hand. And then is what we're going to see is that we also have a mode in our calculator which will allow us to graph uh, parametric equations. So let's go ahead and jump back one more time and we'll finish off on the calculator. All right, so the, the last thing I want to do with our graph here is just note, we, we should have only went from t equals minus 3 to 3. So as what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase this so it doesn't keep going. If we had no restriction on t, um, it would keep going, but we said just minus 3 to 3. So it ends at those red dots. But there's actually even another interesting feature about this graph that we didn't include. And we'll actually be able to see this when we plot it on the calculator. But if you were to plot point by point, starting with t equals minus 3 to 3, if you were to think about those points we plotted, we were always heading in this direction as we plotted. Okay, we were heading along the curve in this direction. Okay. And this is actually important. If we are describing motion by some curve, we would like to know um, what direction it is heading al along the curve, right? But we, we have its path, but we want to know what direction is it actually going to. And finally, let's switch back to the calculator and see what it looks like to plot in parametric mode. Now that we switch back to our calculator, let's go ahead and hit mode. And we'll go down here to where it says function. And remember, we've used polar in here before, but let's use parametric. Let's hit enter, quit out of here, and I'm going to go into my y equals, which you're going to see looks different. Okay. So if you remember, our x equation was t squared. And so if you hit the variable button, it'll actually produce a t. So we have t squared. And then a y was equal to t minus 1. So t minus 1. And we just need to go into our, our windows here and adjust this a little bit. So you might be wondering, what's t min, t max? This has to do with that minus 3 to 3. And for the t step, let's just move this to uh, 0 0.1. Okay. This is just, we plotted right, our t step was 1 when we plotted this by hand. So this is going to plot a lot more points than we did. And then next, we have our x min, x max. Well, we went, again, 0 to 9. But if you want a little bit more room so you can see that it doesn't go further, maybe we could do 0 to 10 um, by 1s. And then in the y direction, how about we go, oh, minus 5 to 3. Again, just to leave ourselves a little bit more room. And we'll go ahead and we'll graph it. All right, and there it is, and that matches what we did. And I'm going to uh, make one more subtle change here, though. If I were to change this to 0 0.05, it's going to plot more points, and therefore it's going to plot more slowly. But I want you to notice what direction it's traced out in, because that, that's the direction of, of the motion that we'd be concerned with. Um, essentially, as this plots, it's making kind of a little movie of the motion for us in some sense. Go ahead and hit graph. There we go. And so that does match what we did when we plotted it by hand. We went with this bottom right-hand corner, followed that parabola all the way to the top. 